hello welcome or welcome back my name is Ari, and today we are going to do a haul basically all of the books that i purchased in september so let's just start the first category is just kind of like some miscellaneous books that i purchased for various reasons from various websites Two of these I have read already, but we'll get to that when we get to that. The first one, I was placing an order on, what is the name of this website? Uh, Better World Books, and I needed, or no, I think I got one book free. Like it was like buy three, get one free, and I had bought the other three books, and I don't remember... I bought three books that were for my Century Reads, um, which I always buy used, and I never really put them in hauls because they're boring and I read them that month and then I give them to charity or something like that usually. So those aren't particularly interesting books, uh, but the free one that I ended up purchasing was The Last Witch uh, by, I'm not going to say his name because I can't pronounce it, but this is the first book in the Witcher series and if you're wondering like why it's so super shiny this used to be a library copy that's like the worst thing about Better Wor World books is most of the books that you get are used library copies um, but they're really cheap on the other hand and since it was like buy three get one free I figured hey I kind of want to read this let's add it and I got it for free so there you go Next up, I, oh, when was this? Middle of September, I did the Buzzword-a-thon where I read books that began with night. And the book that I enjoyed most from that, like, experiment, I ended up buying, which was Coffee Days, Whiskey Nights by Cyrus Parker. Um, this is a book of poetry and it is beautiful on the inside where all the poems with like dark topics are written uh, white ink on black paper and all the poems with light topics are written white ink or black ink on white paper. That's harder to say than it looks. But yeah, I really enjoyed this poetry collection so I supported the author and bought the poetry collection. And then the final book I bought was The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I have heard absolutely nothing but wonderful things about this book from people. It's just one of those fantasy books this year that came out this year that everybody likes. And I've read it already and it was very cute. Um, I'm not, I don't think in love with it as most people are, but it was a very, very sweet moving read. So if you need something light and happy uh, and you like fantasy, I would definitely suggest picking this one up. My next stack looks like this and that's a lot of books and yes, yes it is. What this stack is is all non-fiction books that I have purchased from a independently black owned bookstore called Books and Crannies, which I'll leave their link down below if you want to order from them. Um, the reason that I placed this order is A, I went to go pick up a nonfiction book for me to read last month, but only had one left. And so I was like, oh, I should just order a bunch of them on my like wish list TBR. And then I know the Black Lives Matter. <laughs> I know the Black Lives Matter movement has been like dying off in like advertisements and businesses and stuff like that and that's bullshit like nothing's changed <laughs> why are we suddenly like done with supporting black lives when literally nothing at all has changed so I was like fine I'm gonna go order some nonfiction books from a black owned bookstore and still support black lives. So that is what I did. And now we are going to go through this nonfiction pile. Now this one's, it, it's gonna be funny. There's a lot of like 
very broad topics in here. So um, we're going to start at the top book, which is Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca uh, Solnit, I think is her name. Um, this is basically a book about mansplaining where <laughs> um, I'm assuming it's, yeah, essays where she just talks about men who think they know better than her because she's a woman and god if I don't experience that all the time and I think this is going to be hilarious to read and it's it's very short so down with that. Next up is The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein. This book is about gentrification. Um, it's just a nonfiction book about gentrification and that that's all it's about. Next one is one of the funny ones, and that is when Hitler took cocaine and Lenin lost his brain. And it's just like weird facts about famous people in history. And I think it's dictators. I think it's like weird facts about dictators. Um, but I'm not entirely sure, but it sounded ridiculous, so I bought it. Next up is a book called No Visible Bruises by Rachel Lurie. Rachel Louise Snyder. This book is about um, domestic violence and like why we don't handle domestic violence well in the US and probably like what we should do to you know support women better. I know it's a hard hard concept. Support non-white males. Um, next up is This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson. Juno Dawson is a trans author and I have no idea what this book is about but it is very gay so I'm excited to read it eventually. The next two books are very similar and I didn't know which one is um, the better pick so I bought both of them and they're both about um, black women's hair and this is uh, The Tangled History of Black Hair Culture called Twisted and then this is Hair Story. Um, entangling the roots of black hair in America and I think this one is from a British standpoint and this one is from an American standpoint. I think that's the major difference between the two of them but they're both about um, black women's hair or just black hair in general and um, that was just a topic that I honestly don't know much about and from my personal perspective, like I can understand that black people do have a lot of issues with their hair and how other people treat them because of their hair and I'm just not aware of those things so I wanted to educate myself on the topic and so I got two books that are going to help me educate myself on the topic of black hair. Next up is a book called Eloquent Rage um, and it's about being a person of color but specifically being a feminist of color and um, over my last few months of reading a lot about black lives I noticed that um, feminism and black feminism tend to be a completely separate thing and so I wanted a book on the topic of black feminism so my feminism can support more than just white women so I got a book on it. Um, next up is a book called Bias and this by uh, Jennifer Eberhardt I guess um, and this is just about like uncovering prejudices that we don't realize we're being like prejudiced about like it's unconscious bias and this is just one of those books that I want to read to help educate myself on things that I might be biased on and I might not even realize that that is an unconscious bias. So that's what this one's for. And then the very last one is a book that doesn't sound like anything I would ever read but my friend Trey who picks out my book order for me every month said that he very much enjoyed this book and it's not a self-help book so if he lied to me and this is a self-help book I'm I'm coming for you Trey but this is The Power of Habit. Um, supposedly it's why we form habits and not how to form habits and if it's a why we form habits 
I'm down to read that, but I hate self-help books. Like, I don't know why. I like nonfiction where I can educate myself about, like, ex like not extreme, but where I can educate myself about topics that maybe I don't know so much about and then make myself a better person through education. I hate somebody telling me I need to do something to be a better person, like, or to form habits or drink water or whatever. Um, but yeah, that sounds really weird, but I hate self-help. But if it's a book about why we form habits, that sounds interesting enough. I could do that. So that's the last book. So the final section is going to be ah, my book boxes for September. All right, this is October's box because it comes at the end of the previous month. So even though I got this in September, it's October's box. So September's teas were a raspberry pomegranate, granite, ugh, raspberry pomegranate tea by a med teas, which was decent. It was fine. Um, there was a morning star caffeine free tea by Akshar tea, which I didn't try. Um, there's an Asheville Grey by Asheville Tico, which was fine. And then the French Breakfast Tea by Church Hills Fine Teas, which was also fine. Um, I didn't drink a whole lot of tea this month because it's just been super crazy hot. But everything that I did try was mediocre and nothing stood out as like amazing, but also nothing stood out as like horrible. So for October teas, put that... Uh, Oh, I thought I got a peppermint tea again. I was so mad, but it's an Irish breakfast tea, not a peppermint tea. So the first tea that I have in here is again by Stash Tea, and it is a super Irish breakfast tea. Stop focusing on my face. Um, and yeah, I've had Irish breakfast tea before. Um, I used to drink it a lot when I was like a teenager but not particularly that brand, so maybe I'll love that brand. Next up is an energy tea from Your Tea. Uh, it was very, very plain packaging. There's nothing at all on the back. Let's see what the energy tea is on this thing. The energy tea, green tea, American ginseng, uh, tangerine peel, uh, eucomia bark? I don't know what that is. There's a bunch of things on here that I've never heard of. But it has lavender in it, and I love lavender, so sold. Um, Irish breakfast tea is basically a black tea with a lot of caffeine. Um, energy tea also obviously has a lot of caffeine because it's called energy tea. Next up is a tea pig with a do uh, dachshund on it. Um, this is a Darjeeling Earl Grey tea with a lot of caffeine. I'm done. I'm sold. Apparently there's a little bit of lemon flavor in it. And then the final one is from Tea Kitten. And this is a Pina Colada Karma, um, which is a caffeine-free herbal tea um, with like coconutty flavor, which I like coconut. So everything in here sounds delicious and I just had a tea dive bomb off the side so I'll have to find that later. Alright the next book in here is the book that came in my unplugged book box and that was The Lost Puzzler. Um, I don't remember what this is. This is a post-apocalyptic. Like it's a hundred years have passed since the catastrophe brought humanity to the brink of extinction. So it's a post-apocalyptic book. Uh, I, I really don't know what it's about but Sure. I like dystopia. Next up is my Brilliant Book Monthly book, um, which is a independent bookstore will send you a book every month based off of your subscription. So you can choose um, hardback, paperback, 
and then adult, children's, young adult, blah blah blah, and then you kind of like fill out a questionnaire and then they pick which book they think that you will like based on your questionnaire. And the first month they sent me Gideon the Ninth, which was my fourth copy of Gideon the Ninth. So they did a very good job picking a book for me, but it's a book that I already own multiple times. So I, they're very cool about that and they will send you a replacement book. You just have to email them and be like, hey, I already have this book or hey I'm not interested in this book and so the replacement book that they sent me for that was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix and I want this book or wanted this book so bad just because of the cover. Like look at those 90s VHS vibes on this book cover. That is everything I need in my life. So I'm very happy to get this. I have never read anything by Grady Hendrix though this is the second book that I own by him. I also own um, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by him, which I, again, haven't read. So, but I've heard that he does horror where, like, it looks humorous, but it is not humorous. It's scary as shit. So very excited to eventually getting around to read something by Grady Hendrix. And even if I don't like that book, that cover is awesome, so I'm happy to have it. And for this month's book, they sent me uh, The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chapman, which is also a horror book um, that's apparently won quite a few awards. I don't really, I've never heard of this one. Um, I don't really read a lot of horror, but I don't mind that they sent me a horror book for, like, October. I mean, technically this was the September book, but it got to me in late September, so I would have been reading it in October. So I'm just going to read the back of this to you because it sounds interesting. Um, in the 1930s, Ella Louise and her daughter Jessica are driving from her home to the outskirts of Pilots Creek, Virginia, in the middle of the night. Ella Louise is accused of using her apothe- apothe- <laughs> why can't I say that? Apothe- apothe- why can't I say apothecary? Apothecary. Apothecary. She is a youth accused of using her apothecary wow, uh, for witchcraft, and both are burned at the stake. Ella Louise's burial site is never found, but the little girl has the most famous grave in the South, a steel reinforced coffin surrounded by a fence of interconnected white crosses. Some wonder if the mother was the witch, why is Jessica's grave so tightly sealed? This question fuels a legend as their story is told around a campfire in the 1950s by a man forever marked by his boyhood encounters with Jessica. Decades later, a boy at that campfire will cast Amber Pendleton as Jessica in a 70s horror movie inspired by the witch girl of Pilot's Creek. Amber's experiences on the set uh, in its meta remake in the 90s will ripple through pop culture, ruining her life and career after she becomes the target of a witch hunt herself. Amber's best chance to break the cycle of horror comes when a true crime investigator tracks her down to interview her for his popular podcast. But will this final act of storytelling redeem her, or will it bring the story full circle, ready to be told once again, and again, and again, and again? So, that's kind of interesting. Um, just like the circle of the same story being told over and over again across the decades. I like it. Interesting. I'm sold. Final thing in here is my book of the month club book. And this one, uh, I remember September there wasn't really any books that I was very interested in at all. So I'm a little unsure about this. And it's the last story of Mina Lee. I probably should have skipped this month, but this is what I went with. Um, which one was this? A woman uh, named Mar Margo Lee. Her mother Mina has died and uh, Margo starts digging through her mother's past um, and it's kind of like an interwoven story with Margo's search into Mina's past and then um, Mina's first year as a or as in a Korean American, basically, so she's an immigrant from Korea. So I like immigration stories a lot, so I assume that's why I picked this up, is because it's a Korean American immigrant story, and I like, or at least every immigrant story I've read this year about women immigrating to America I've enjoyed, so that's obviously why I picked this up.
does it sound like the best book I'm ever gonna read? No. Am I probably gonna like it? I guess we'll find out. And that, that is everything this month. I went on a little bit of a binge buy this month, which is okay. Uh, but yeah, that's everything. If you can kind of see over on this side of the screen, these are two of my monthly book boxes. So these will be coming up soon for unboxings. I still haven't gotten my Coffee in a Classic in yet, but by the time this goes up and by the time those go up and by the time all my wrap ups go up, I would have had that Coffee in a Classic for like two weeks. But that's my haul for this month. Let me know what you think. I also am an influencer with Libro FM and I get copies of audiobooks every month from Libro FM. If you are interested in me adding those to the haul so you know which influencer copies I pick up each month, let me know down in the comments because I'll be glad to like throw up pictures of those audiobooks that I'm hauling every month even though I don't show um, any ebooks or audiobooks that I haul, uh, just the physical books. But like I said, if you're interested in me adding that to the haul, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!